Hey, you doing one and all? Greetings and welcome to 8-Bits in the Basement. So, today's episode, I'm going to be once again looking at my Commodore C2N data set. Do you remember this guy? A couple of months ago, I did an episode on it, and in it, what we did was we pretty much took it apart. We had a look at the insides of it to see what made it tick, and we had a little chat about how it differed from a regular tape recorder you could buy to plug into a Spectrum or whatever back in the day. And what I also did was I adjusted the azimuth on it in order to get it to work as best as it possibly could with this old Commodore 64 here. And it is working away very, very well. Now today's episode was supposed to be a follow-up in which I would show you how to convert T64 and TAP files into WAV files, put them onto a cassette and load them up on your Commodore 64. However, Ken at Canadian Retro Things, he did the exact same video not too long ago. And I couldn't top the video that he did. So I said, I won't cover that again. What I'll do is I'll put a link to his video in the description here and I'll find something else that I can do on it. So I had a little look on the internet and I came across a site called Load64. And on that site, I found a forum where a guy by the name of Ramsey, he posted a couple of modifications that could be made on the C2N to kind of open it up and make it more useful to us. So um, one of these modifications allows the C2N to become a bridge between an audio device like a, a mobile phone or an MP3 player or a PC or a laptop or whatever to let you transfer audio files directly across to the Commodore 64. And another mod that he showed there was to let you record those files directly onto a blank cassette that was put inside in the C2N itself. So today's episode I'm going to do those two mods and we'll see how we get on. So uh, let's get right to it. Okay, so I'm after taking my Commodore C2N data set apart and I'm after exposing its little PCB here. The very first mod that we're going to be doing is one that will allow us to connect an external audio source to this drive and effectively let the Commodore 64 think that it external device is a cassette inside in this data set drive. So what we need to do that is we need two pieces of wire like these. We need a 100 nanofarad capacitor like this guy here. He's marked 104. And also we're going to need a three and a half millimeter audio jack, a female one. And uh, we'll just tap in at various points on the board. So the first thing I'm going to do is... Okay, so this here is a little module now that I'm after making up that I'll be connecting to the C2N. So basically what it is, is the right audio input on this little uh, three and a half millimeter female port is after being soldered to a wire, which has the other end of it soldered to one leg on the 100 nanofarad capacitor. And the ground connector on the audio input here is just going to uh, to a regular wire which will be soldered to a ground The port. leg on this little capacitor here is going to go to this point here, right here. And this earth side here, this ground side, is going to go to this point here. So I'll join those in and that should give us what we need to load programs and whatnot from a mobile phone. Okay, so here we are on the very first modification. It's the moment of truth. So I'm hoping that this works. And um, I've got this guy connected up to Commodore 64. Commodore 64 is powered on. So it's still not in its shell and it's turned upside down so as not to crush any of these connections I've put on it. And um, what I've done is I've got my mobile phone here and I've loaded up Tap Dancer on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this little tap file that I've put on it, which is Green Beret. Now, so that's all ready to be played. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the headphone socket of my mobile phone into this little connector that I soldered on earlier to the C2N. And what I need to do is I need to, to use it in a regular way that I would. So what I do is I press shift and run stop to get my load press play on tape. Then I need to press play on tape, which is this one. 
and now I need to press play here and this should start feeding sound into this guy and we should find something now the thing is as soon as I find something I'm gonna to have to press either the spacebar or the Commodore key because this won't actually pause and usually what happens is the Commodore will pause for like three or four seconds to let me know what it's found but the problem here is as this doesn't pause it'll advance on through the program and then it'll start loading somewhere a few seconds into the code and well it won't work so that's one thing you need to do using this this particular technique is you need to hit spacebar straight away but as you can see it's loading up so I let it load and I come back to you when it's finished just in case you were wondering one thing I forgot to mention while it is still loading and we're still a little bit away from it being finished I just want to prove to you that there is actually no cassette inside in this game so as you can see there's no cassette in there at all and it is indeed loading I often wonder things I let myself when I watch these videos but there you go it's working the way as it should so far anyway so fingers crossed okay so here we go should be done now <laughs> there we go so that works let me get a joystick and we'll try it out I'm pretty content that that game is working that that whole system really is working for us so I'm happy with that so far so shush shush you shush you so the next mod that we're going to do is one that will allow us to copy instead of actually loading the game what we're going to do is we're going to play it from the telephone in the same manner but what we're going to do is put a blank tape into this here and we're going to record the sound onto the blank tape using the C2N as the recording device and then afterwards we're going to load from that tape using the C2N to the Commodore 64 so it's a way that you can create your own tapes without having any kind of external tape recording device so um, I'll show you that little modification right now okay so the second mod I want to show you here today is the recording mod the way this is set up now it can take sound in and it'll use this guy as a bridge so what you would do if you wanted to also be able to record to this C2N is you'd make up this whole module here again and you just wire it in at different points but just for the sake of demonstration what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this capacitor from this point here and I'm just going to solder it in here and that'll allow us to be able to record to a blank tape so we get to it Pop. and there we go that's it mod done righto so we're after making our second mod and I'm here in front of the Commodore 64 again so we're going to test it out to see does it work so I've put the old C2N's innards back into the plastic case and the reason I've done that is that I want the cassette that we're going to be recording to to be well aligned with the read write head so that the data is written to it as cleanly as possible and what I've done is this little hole on the bottom of the C2N I fed these cables out so that I can easily connect to my mod so that's pretty much what I've done there so in order to use this mod what we do is we put a blank cassette into the C2N right on and then I connect my mobile phone to the mod that we made here and I'm going to fire up tap dancer exactly the same as I did before so there we are now I've selected the file and all the rest the only difference is when I was loading it before I had the volume at two thirds so it was at like volume level 10 of 15 but when I am going to record the file to a tape I need to increase the volume a little bit more so I, I have it at level 14 now out of a possible 15 but um, you need to play around with levels to, uh, to find the ones that will work best for you which whatever brand of phone you're using so all we need to do is to press record and play you'll see that the save light will come on here and just keep an eye and wait until the dead tape has run through and then press play and this guy here will 
play the audio file as it did before, only this time instead of playing it through to the Commodore 64, what's happening is it's playing it through and it's been recorded onto that blank cassette that we put in. So we need to wait because it's a real time thing and it'll take, well, about five minutes depending on the length of the program that you're trying to record across. So what we'll do is we'll come back in five minutes and see if it worked or not. Okay, so the process has completed. So I can stop this tape here and rewind it. In the meantime, I'll stop my mobile phone and I will unplug it from the mod I made. So the next thing to do is test and see did it actually work or not. So we'll wait for this to rewind and then I will press shift and run stop and I'll press play on tape. Now you might remember the very first mod we did where we were using the data set as a bridge between the phone here and the Commodore 64. I had to hover over the spacebar or the Commodore key in order to press it as soon as I found something because the computer would pause for a couple of seconds but the audio on the, the, audio on the phone was going to continue rolling through. Now I don't have to worry about that with the cassette at all because the computer is in full control over the cassette and when it finds the program it'll pause the cassette the time it wants to tell me and then it'll carry on. But this here is a very very good sign that it's actually after finding a program so it means that at least the data set is for sure capturing audio and writing it to the tape that's inside of it. So what we'll do is we'll wait the five minutes or so and see does this game actually load and uh, I'll come back to you at the end of that. Yeah, we're gonna have a dance party here that'll rival Adrian Black. We're almost there. Will it load or won't it load? What you gonna do? There we go. I'll tell you, I'll be completely honest with you. The reason I'm so happy about this loading is that it's the fourth time I've tried. Now, off camera, I tried this whole um I tried this whole setup and it worked perfectly. And once I started filming, it wouldn't work. It'd get so far through the loading and it'd crash and blah 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 blah. And in the end of it all, it turned out to be the damn phone. Once I cleared the cache in the application on the phone, it works perfectly. So that's just for full disclosure. And it also explains the kind of Adrian Black dance party thing that I was a bit happy about it working to that point. So here we are anyway. This mod works perfectly as well. As you can see, we have used this little blank tape. Well, it's not blank anymore. It was blank. In order to load up Green Beret. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Does it actually work? No, that it's loaded up that far. I should maybe turn down the volume a little bit, shouldn't I? Oh, maybe not that far down. Here we are. Okay, so same as last time. And yeah, it seems to be working. I mean, there's no crashes, there's no graphical glitches, there's no nothing like that. We're shooting fire and we're killing soldiers. So there we go. That is working great. So uh, yeah, I'll just move you on to another little part of the video now. And we'll wrap it all up. Now, so there you go, that's pretty much today's video coming to a close. But I thought what I'd do was I'd share a few little nuggets of information that I picked up while I was making all this video. And number one is, I'd say don't waste your time or don't fret too much about trying to find new old stock or blank cassettes. Because I found that if you can find second-hand cassettes that have stuff recorded on them already, like old albums or whatever, they are perfectly fine for this kind of application with Commodore 64s or any other type of computer and they're very very cheap as well. Uh, the second thing I would say is if you take a look at the instructions for the for making the record mod and you take a look at what I did you'll find that I deviated a little bit. I threw in a 100 nanofarad uh, capacitor where normally there isn't one and the reason I did that isn't because the mod doesn't work right. The mod works perfectly but the problem I had was using my mobile phone, it's capable through some type of resistance reading or something to tell if a device has been plugged into its headphone socket or not. So it appeared to be working away perfect until I pressed record on the C2N and then as far as it was concerned, 
The device had been unplugged from its headphone and it started to play the sound out through its speakers and not into the C2N, so it wouldn't work for recording. So after a little bit of fumbling around and trying a few different things, I found that if I added in that 100 nanofarad capacitor, it worked away perfectly. So that was the reason I did that. Now, another thing you'll notice while I was doing all this, I was using an application called Tap Dancer on my phone. Now, Tap Dancer is a great application. I've been using it since like 2017 when I started with all these old computers and all the rest. And it works for pretty much everything. It works great. But unfortunately, for some reason, it's not available through the Google Store anymore. It hasn't been since about 2019. I don't know what the reason for it is. Um, so really, the only way you can get it now is from untrusted sources as an APK file. That's up to you entirely if you want to do it that way or not. But um, if you're not comfortable with that, fair enough. What you can do is you can go to load64.com and there on their homepage, there's a whole list of Commodore 64 games that you can click on and it will play the audio there and then without you having to download anything or do anything and you can pipe it directly from your computer or from your mobile phone into your Commodore 64 and play away on whatever games they have available there. Um, yeah, the only other thing I'd say to you is about volume levels. So no matter what kind of device you're using, you're going to have to play around with the volume a little to find the optimal vol volume for it to work with all this kind of a setup. Now, I can't tell you that 40% is the best or 60% because it differs from one device to another. So basically, my advice is start at about 60%. Uh, try and see if you're using it with Commodore 64, try and see if it actually finds the program. If it finds the program correctly, you, you know you're on the right track. If it doesn't find it at all, adjust the volume a little and eventually you get to a point maybe where it finds the program, but the text is a little garbled and you're, you're pretty much on the right track. You just fine tune from there on. So that's pretty much that. Um, yeah, apart from that, that's the end of this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. And um, I hope to be along in another week or two's time with another episode on some other thing. I'm not sure what just yet. But uh, in the meantime, if you haven't, think of clicking on the old subscribe button. Give us now a thumbs up. Leave a comment. They're always appreciated. And thank you to absolutely everybody who supports the channel. It means an awful lot to me. Um, so with all that being said, I bid you a fair adieu. It's not even adieu. It's until next time. And we'll talk to you all again soon, okay? Bye-bye.